Welcome in, everybody. Um, as usual, we're just going to wait a couple minutes to get started, but I see you're all coming into the room. Um, while we're waiting, I'm Kat. Um, did any of you cook some seafood this weekend? Right in the chat, um, if you made anything fun with some uh, wild Alaskan seafood, and also where you're tuning in from. I'm always very curious to see where, where everyone's here from. I'm in New York, uh, in Brooklyn, New York. And did I cook seafood this weekend? I definitely did. Um, I made a halibut sort of seared thing with like a chimichurri sauce on it, just super simple um, and fresh for the summer because I have tons of herbs right now um, that I just need to use before they go bad. So um, yeah, let me know in the chat where you're tuning in from and if you made anything fun this weekend with seafood. Sockeye fish cakes. Yep, I love throwing those in my freezer. Um, I usually, after a big shoot, if we have a bunch of seafood left over, I'll make them into fish cakes and then just put, you know, 15 salmon cakes or white fish cakes in the freezer to pop into my toaster oven, oven over the next month. Ooh, pellet grill. I've never used a pellet grill. Hello, a couple of people here from New York and Long Island. Um, for those of you coming in, just would love to know where you're tuning in from and if you made anything fun with seafood this weekend. Ooh, cashew crusted halibut, that sounds really nice. Oh, homemade biscuit. You're really impressing me with your skills. I've never made homemade biscuits. <laughs> um, yeah, lemon butter pan sauce is always a good way to go. Um, just gonna wait one more minute before we get started here in case there are any latecomers. Get my camera set up too. Um, all right. Well, it is, ooh, a stew with salmon and shrimp and vegetables. It's about time to get into stew season, so. Um, it got really hot here in New York in the last day. So <laughs> I have to pivot back to summer food and grilling after being ready for stews. Oh, nice, Amy. Did you make the uh, creamy peppercorn sauce that was up on the blog? That's a really nice one. Um, okay, we can talk about food all day. Um, let's get started and talk about food. Let me close my screen out here and get going. All right, um, welcome everybody. I'm Kat from the Wild Alaskan Company Recipe Team. And today I'm going to show you how to cook salmon. Actually, we're, we're gonna sear a filet of salmon from frozen. So that means no thawing, no waiting, no pre-planning no pre whatsoever, just immediate freezer to table deliciousness. So um, before we get to that, just some housekeeping. I invite you to turn on your captions um, to follow along with this event. You can do them do that at the bottom of your screen. Um, there's a button that says show captions, or you might find it in a button that says more with three dots and it should be under there. So feel free to turn that on. And if you have any questions that you wanna ask along the way, you can drop that into the Q and A at the bottom of the screen, not the chat, but the Q&A, that'll help us field the questions a little bit better. Um, but if you drop it in the chat, no big deal. Just um, we'll make sure to get to it if you put it in the right section, which is the Q&A section. So lastly, if you need to leave before today's event is over, um, don't worry, we'll send a link in the next day or two. Um, it'll be right in your inbox. It'll also be an event that's immediately uh, available immediately afterward on our Facebook homepage. Um, we're going to be live streaming that, or we are li live streaming that right now. Hi, everyone on Facebook. Um, so you can visit the homepage and just rewatch to your heart's delight after that. So um, I'm joined today by a few of my colleagues from the member experience team um, and also the recipe team if they want to come onto camera to say hi, as usual, give everyone a little wave. So um, thank you all for being here today. These are the folks who are going to help answer your questions or send me all the tough questions along the way. So, um, all right, let's get started. What we are making today, um, we are going to, or I'm to start, I'm just going to make a plain and simple seared filet from frozen. Um, you can actually also bake salmon from frozen. That's another day. Um, searing is my go-to option because 
It's ready in 15 minutes flat from freezer to plate. That's all you need. So um, you can also take, or you can take this really simple, straightforward method for cooking salmon from frozen and build any meal out of that. You know, you can just serve it with some lemon, whatever you want to do. But today I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to actually make a quick brown butter caper sauce that'll be perfect for the salmon. It'll make it a little more of a put together grown up meal um, rather than just salmon out of the freezer, which is delicious too. But um, also when you cook frozen salmon, it is a lot more difficult to control the doneness on the filet. So I tend to eat salmon cooked from frozen with um, a little bit of sauce, just in case I do overcook it a little bit. So a nice butter sauce will be the perfect way to, you know, bring everything together and make everything perfect. So um, we're going to have a few minutes of downtime as the fish is cooking. It's a like a two step process. I, I promise it's very easy, um, but I'm going to use those few minutes to just have a little bonus skill moment. Um, and I'm going to show you how to remove skin from a filet of salmon, not from a frozen filet, that's very impossible to do, but um, removing skin from a filet of salmon, um, if you want to do that in the future for anything. It's not something I usually do because salmon skin helps the filet stay moist as it cooks, um, but it's a really good skill to have under your belt, um, just in case you need it. So um, I believe we have the recipe link dropped into the chat. If you want to take a peek at what we're making today, there's a little, nice, beautiful picture up top to show you what that looks like. Um, in the meantime, let me grab my frozen salmon. So I'm going to be cooking with sockeye today because that's what I have in my freezer right now. Um, First thing I need to do is take this out of the pack. I know I had a pair of scissors here. Here we go. So this is just going to come straight out of the pack right now. Um, you can do this cook from frozen technique with coho salmon as well. Um, one thing that I will note is um, it's a technique that works best when you have a fillet that's on the thinner side. So you don't want a really chunky fillet because those are going to cook a lot faster on the outside than the inside. So the cook, like the doneness is going to be very uneven. Um, it's better to have a piece that's a little bit on the thinner side. This is about average, but it's what I had. And that's what I'm going to show you um, how to cook today. So um, let me just set that aside for now. Um, so we've got salmon. That's the first and foremost important ingredient. I've also got um, some butter, a couple tablespoons of it. We're going to be a little indulgent here. Um, this is also a recipe that was developed by a chef and you know they love to use butter so it's going to taste really good. Um, got some salt and pepper just for seasoning, some fresh thyme. Um, you could also use dry thyme but fresh thyme is really nice because it's going to have um, a more complex flavor when you're making a brown butter sauce. It'll really infuse into it. Um, just some lemon. Um, we're going to use juice and the zest of that. Um, so if you have a lemon zester or just like, you know, a microplane like this, that will come in super handy for this. The zest is not integral, but it gives it just a little extra um, brightness and flavor. Um, and then the supplies. So we're going to need a pan with a lid. This pan that I have, it doesn't have a perfectly fitting lid to it, but just one that's going to fit. Um, right over, doesn't have to be a tight seal, is what you need. Um, we're also going to need a fish spatula. All right, this isn't a need. This is like a need in my life, but a spatula. Um, fish spatulas are gonna be really helpful for helping you flip a fish really effortlessly, especially when you're searing. So um, I just said it's a need, but it really isn't. A good spatula will do. Um, and the other supply is parchment paper. Um, this is also not completely, completely necessary, but I find it's helpful. And let me just walk you through um, why. So um, let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab my scissors and cut out a piece of parchment paper. About this big, just to match the size of the filet, just kind of eyeballing it here. And what I'm gonna do is lay that down into my pan so that eventually I'm gonna put the filet right on top of the cutout that I've made, just like that. Um, 
I'm going to actually be putting this on a, the stovetop behind me just so I have some surface area to work with here for now. Um, but what I'm going to do is take this, put it uh, over medium low heat on my actual stove behind me, um, and just let that heat up before I put the salmon on the pan. So let me just get that started and I'll come right back. All right, so we're gonna get that going on medium low. So the parchment paper, the purpose that it's serving here is I'm gonna be putting the salmon directly into the pan and it's gonna protect the surface of this fillet to um, not singe when it is on the surface of the skillet, basically. Um, the parchment paper is just gonna be a little bit of a buffer and that'll keep it looking pretty. Um, like I said, it's not totally necessary. It really isn't going to stick to the pan when it's um, like this because there's so much moisture um, on the surface of the filet right now. Um, it has a like an ice glaze on it. I don't know if you can uh, really see that. Let me move my thing. It looks like there's like a, yeah, just like a thick layer of ice on there. Um, that is just something that's applied to the fish to keep it nice and fresh um, once it's processed um, and cut uh, into these beautiful pieces here. So um, like I said, parchment's just gonna protect it from the surface of the pan. Um, let me go ahead and see if this is warm enough. Let's get started a little bit here. And then the rest of this, you can just save for another use. You can have all these little odd shapes cut out for the future if you plan on not planning to defrost your fish again, um, or, you know, do what you will with it. Don't, don't ever throw it away if you don't really need to. So, um, all right, let's see, what can I do while this is heating? Well, nothing. So let me just go ahead and put the salmon in the pan. Like I said, I'm going to be putting this in the pan, skin side down. Let me just bring it back over to show you. Just like this. And then the lid is going to go right on top. So that's going to go over medium low heat for say about five or six minutes. So that's basically just going to melt a lot of the ice that's on the surface of the filet really gently, giving it kind of like a quick thaw in the pan. Um, and then once that initial layer of ice uh, is melted off, then we'll take it out of the pan, do a little zhuzhing up, and we'll actually get searing. So while that's going, um, as promised, here's a little bonus skill moment. Um, well, actually, if does anyone have any questions right now about what I just did? Uh, two quick questions. Do you need to rinse the fish before you put it in the pan? You don't need to rinse it. Um, all of the stuff that's on there right now, the stuff, the ice glaze that is on there right now is going to melt off and sort of evaporate in the pan. So I wouldn't worry about um, rinsing off the ice glaze um, from the fish right now, not using this technique, not necessary. And then what side down on the pan did you put it? Could you just remind us? So um, I think, skin, I think side. I skin side down, but I actually meant to say skin side up. I'm so okay. used to putting fish in the pan skin side down. Okay. Um, so skin side up, do as I show, not as I say. Um, do as I do, not as I say. Yes, thank you for um, clarifying. Um, if you're searing salmon, not from frozen, but like a filet that's been defrosted, you'll want to put it skin side down in a pan. But if you're searing, if you're doing it from frozen this way. Um, all right, moving on. I have a fully defrosted filet. This has absolutely nothing to do with searing salmon from frozen. This is just a bonus skill moment in case any of you are wondering why I'm doing this. Um, I've always wanted to show people how to do this and we have the perfect amount of time. So um, I have a filet of sockeye, um, again, that's just what I had in my fridge or freezer. And I am apparently wanting to have the skin off of this. So no problem. The easiest way to do this, and actually perhaps the only way to do it, um, you can't see the salmon. I see a note in the bottom of the chat, just making sure everyone can see this. If you want to spotlight um, the uh, iPhone camera, Kristen, now would be a good time. Um, let's see. I also see that someone else cannot see how to do this. Um, let me, you can't see it either. Okay, great. Um, I have two cameras going, so let me get off. Can screen. you see it? 
Can you guys see it now or is it in, I see it on my screen. So can you see that everybody? One on. All right, thank you for um, helping us with these somewhat technical difficulties. You can see it now. Yeah, you can see the logo. That's not what you're supposed to see. Yeah, you, um, can't, see the, you can't see the cutting board guys. Was... <laughs> okay, we're gonna get through this. Let's do- um, How's that? I, One more that time? Looks... Perfect. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, All right. back there. Thanks for the help, guys. Whew. All right. Um, I just like, you know, got the sweat off my brow with my salmon -y hands here. So, yes, we've got sockeye. Um, actually, I don't know if you saw the pan earlier, but I'll show you once I um, take the fish off the heat. Anyway, so this, like I said, this is just a mini skill moment. It has nothing to do with steering salmon from frozen. Um, what I like to do is I have a fillet knife. It's a super thin, flexible knife. Do you have a fillet knife? Probably not. So I'm going to not use this today, but this is a very easy knife to use when you're um, uh, filleting fish, hence it's called a fillet knife. If you just have a normal non-fillet knife, um, what you're going to want to do is create basically a tab with this skin. Like you're going to cut through right to the skin, but not through it. And then now you have like a little thing to hold on to here. And you see, I haven't cut through to the skin yet. Um, and then this part is a little tricky if you don't have a fillet knife, but you're gonna hold the knife against the cutting board. The skin is not super fragile. Um, I know it might seem like it is, um, but basically you're, holding the skin against the cutting board and putting the knife in between the fillet. So this knife is not super sharp, as you can see. And that's why I'm using it, because I'm going to show you that you can do this with any knife at home, even a big, fat, dull knife. You're, like I said, holding it between the skin and the fillet, holding it flat against the cutting board. This is going to help guide the knife through the entire fillet. If you had let's say your fancy fillet knife here, this would be a lot easier to turn and bring it through the entire piece of fish here, just like that. And now you've got a skinless sockeye fillet, works for coho too, and you've got this, you know, little flap of salmon skin that you can either feed to your dog or discard or whatever you'd like to do with it. Um, sometimes I actually put this into a pan and then, uh, make it into like a crispy salmon chip. Um, but I'll save that for another little, yes, you can definitely crisp it. Um, what I would do if you're crisping it is just clean up some of this um, flesh and get as get it to be as like much skin as possible and then put it in a pan with a little oil and just like hold it against the uh, skillet for a minute. Like I said, I'll save that for another day. It's a really fun thing to do and it tastes really delicious. So this is just gonna go into the fridge for another use. Um, you know, maybe I'll cut that into chunks and put it in a chowder or poach it, uh, something like that. Um, that's basically the only time I'm removing salmon skin from the fillet is if I want to poach it and do something really delicate with it. So um, thank you for watching that little mini skill interlude. Now, um, I think it's been about five or six minutes since I've um, put the salmon on the parchment. So I'm going to move this pan over here to my induction burner. Um, you know, I think I need to cook this a little bit more. So I'm just going to do this while we're here. Basically what you want to get the salmon to look like is a little bit thawed um, and this still has a pretty thick ice glaze on top. So I'm going to give it another minute in the pan here. Um, in the meantime, any questions about what I just did with the um, skinning, filleting the salmon? Are you cooking that on medium heat, Kat? Um, this is on medium low right now just to get the salmon to gently defrost and also gently come to uh, like a, a temperature together. Um, if we started this out on high, the inside would cook or even medium, the inside will cook 
way too fast, um, or the outside will cook way too fast, the inside will still be frozen. This is just like a little more delicate to start on medium low for this first stage of um, cooking salmon from frozen, so. All right, um, once we get this salmon ready to go, I'm gonna wanna pat the filet dry. So let me grab a, another kitchen towel to do that with. Yeah, that's looking a little bit better now. Um, and I don't know if you saw when I pulled that fish up, um, there, the parchment is protecting the fish from the surface of the pan but you will notice that it still does leave a little bit of this like albumin, not a big deal. Um, this is gonna be covered with like a butter sauce anyway. So let's keep this going. And you'll see there's moisture coming off of it right now. That's all of the ice glaze melting off of the um, filet. Um, what I can do in the meantime is I'm gonna be putting in some time, not to make a pun on this, into the butter sauce later. So let me go ahead and pull this, the leaves off of this. Just gonna give it a, a little bit of a chop so that I'm not, you know, feeling like a, a bunny rabbit eating herbs out of a garden. Some nice little pieces here. Um, I think this is probably a good amount. And since this is going into like a salmon -y sauce, I'm just gonna use my salmon -y knife and that'll, cook off any any juices on there that are a little raw right now. But oh, that smells so good. I mean, there's nothing like I, I think that dry herbs have a time and place, but there's nothing like fresh herbs in the summer when you're making uh, seafood, especially the flavors are just so, um, so clean and pair really well with fish. So, all right, so we've got a little time chopped up right now. All right, and I think this is ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is remove the salmon from the pan. I'm going to remove the parchment, wipe this out a little bit if there's any excess moisture. And then I'm gonna pat the salmon dry. I'm just gonna leave it on this little, beneath this little towel for a moment. Um, the heat on this is gonna go up to medium now. Um, since we're making a brown butter sauce, I'm going to add some butter over medium heat and just melt this. And this is a lot of butter. This is not for one piece of salmon. This is enough butter for two servings. But um, the great thing is that you can um, so you can save any of the brown butter for future use. So um, I'm making a little extra sauce, knowing that I'm going to eat this eventually um, twice. Maybe I'll use the other filet to, um, to uh, or serve this with the other filet. So what this is here, this is four tablespoons of butter. So it's two tablespoons each. I did tell you that a chef made this recipe. So you know, in case you didn't know what chefs do is they put butter on everything. Um, you're more than welcome to reduce the amount of butter that you're using in a sauce like this. Um, I would just cut it in half, but know that it's going to brown up faster. Um, so you just need to account for that and keep a close eye on what you have going on in the pan. So um, what I'm gonna do now that this is bubbling and looking delicious, I'm going to put the salmon right into the pan. And this is actually gonna go skin side down, just like that. And please excuse the funny looking filet of salmon right now. I promise this is gonna look super beautiful in a little bit. So um, we're gonna heat this up to just over medium so we can get a nice sear going. And once the bottom of this filet is seared. It'll probably be maybe three minutes or so. Then we'll flip it. Oh, actually, you know what I need to do right now? I need to put the lid on. Then um, after a few minutes, we're gonna flip it um, so that it cooks through completely. So um, any questions about anything I've done so far? We have a, a couple of minutes until this is um, ready to flip. I'd love to know why you wiped out the pan when you transferred 
the filet out and put the butter in before you put the butter in. So the, there really wasn't that much moisture in there, but whenever you have water in a pan and then you're adding oil or butter to it, it is going to basically create um, these like moments of like splattering. So uh, anytime you're cooking anything and you're adding moisture to a pan that is full of hot fat, um, it's gonna splatter. Wiping out the pan just ensures that you're not gonna have like a total mess of things uh, popping up at you. So, um, you know, same, it's also something that's kind of gonna prevent the fish from really getting a good sear. Um, cooking it this way, you're actually going to get a pretty good sear even though you're cooking it from frozen. Um, but when you're cooking salmon, searing it fresh, like you always wanna pat the skin dry. Like I said, it prevents a good sear if there's moisture on it, but it also is gonna splatter all over the place if you're putting in like a, a salmon that's just thawed right out of you know the fridge. So that is why you do that. Um, there really wasn't any moisture when I did it. It was more for just to like be uh, true to the, true to the script here. So. For sure. Okay. Uh, another question. Would putting the lid on delay the searing from steaming? I think the question is, is putting the lid on going to, are you going to still get a good sear or a crisp on the skin if you have the lid on? Um, in this case, it is still going get to a, get a good sear. It's not going to be as seary as the cooked not from frozen, but even having the lid on, it's more important for you to have the lid on so that the salmon cooks through than having that, um, you know, release of steam from the pan. Um, also, the skin is right now in like literally just a pool of fat. So there's no real risk that that's going to get, um, you know, right now it's exposed to the fat and not any moisture. Um, so yeah, lid on for something like this. Usually when I'm searing, I'm not from frozen. I don't put the lid on though. Could you do that first step in an instant pot where you're cooking from frozen in an instant pot? I know that wouldn't specifically be for that, this recipe, but just a question in general about if you could use an instant pot for cooking from frozen. Um, you know, I actually have never used an instant pot before, so I cannot personally speak to that. I think, um, it is something that you can do. Um, all right, that's not looking so good. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to take a quick flip. You'll see this looks nice and crispy. I know that looks really brown on here because we're looking at a zoom camera, but I'm going to take this off the heat because this one's perfect. I'm going to grab my oven mitt here. I'm just letting that other side cook for a moment until it releases. All right, and then now you can see that the butter in here has taken on this really beautiful brown color. Maybe it doesn't look that beautiful in the pan right now, but um, what I'm gonna do, I did turn off the heat because it's pretty hot. I'm gonna add in a couple tablespoons of capers. Um, turn the heat back on here, actually. Um, so the capers are gonna cook in this butter and get nice and crispy. Um, you always wanna use drained capers when you're doing this um, because if you're, again, adding in anything that has liquid, it's going to start spattering. Um, so, you know, I usually like to drain capers and then pat them dry. Um, but you'll see sort of in these bubbles that the butter is producing, um, like a nice brown color. Um, and that is exactly what we're going for. That creates like really nice caramelization, um, like a rich flavor that I think is really good for fall. But uh, we're gonna just cook these for a little bit until they get nice and crispy. And they're really hard to see because there's a lot of bubbles in here that look like capers. But um, once I take this off of here, it'll be very clear what's going on. Um, I'm also gonna add the thyme. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna wait till these get a little crispier before I add the thyme. This smells so incredible. Um, I actually didn't season the fish because my capers are really salty. I buy, one, buy capers that are salt packed. Um, and as I was sort of snacking on them before, um, it's like so salty that it makes you wince a little bit. So I decided to not season the fish. Uh, I'm just gonna expect that the sauce is gonna be the perfect amount of seasoning for it. So. All right, so that I'm going to turn off the heat officially now. 
add in some of this time and this will batter a little bit just because uh, of the oils in the herb and any moisture because it is, it, is, it is a fresh leaf. So just until that's fragrant. And last but not least, well, second to last but not least, a little bit of lemon. I'm just tilting this away from me so that I don't get battered. Just about like a, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon or a couple of teaspoons of lemon juice. You can always adjust that as you like. Um, and then a little bit of lemon zest here. Um, that wow. adds a really, really nice flavor to the butter sauce. And for the final moment, let me see if I can get a good surface here so you can see what's going on. Got my crispy seared salmon filet from Frozen and this really rich butter sauce that's gonna add so much flavor to um, this already flavorful filet. I like pairing this with sockeye actually, just because it has such a rich flavor on its own. Um, coho is a little bit more delicate, but you'll see that butter has like a nice golden hue um, against the bottom of the pan here. All right, and now for the moment of truth, the fork. All right, so we have a perfect little flake of salmon coming off of here and a really tasty dish. Um, all right, this is, this is what you're gonna make here and this is what you're gonna eat really fast, really delicious, and actually crispy, which is really nice. If we cut into the salmon in the middle, it's a little bit medium rare, as you can see, which is just how I like it. As it sits, it'll sort of cook through a little bit more. Um, like I said, when you're cooking from frozen, the exterior is going to be a little bit more done than the interior, but eventually it'll all even out. Um, this is to me, perfect. Yeah, I think a lot of you like medium rare salmon too. So um, that's that's it. That's all there is to it. Any questions about what I did there? What temperature do you like to cook the fish to? So medium rare salmon is when it's still pink and moist in the middle. If you're using an instant read thermometer to check the temperature, um, aim for 120 or 125 degrees. I didn't use a thermometer to check the temperature of this um, just because I kind of had an idea that it was probably done. But you can always go ahead and stick a thermometer in there and see you know, if you're pretty close. If it's not quite 120 and it's a little under, I would go ahead and pull it and not worry so much because it is gonna have some carryover cooking, especially because the outside is so much warmer than the inside. Um, carryover cooking basically is what happens when you pull meat from the heat. Um, it continues to cook a little bit, which is why you tend to let things rest a little bit before you serve it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, 120 is what, what you should aim for if you want medium rare. If you want a little bit more done, 125, 130. Mm, the capers are so crispy when you fry them. So good. What does the skin taste like? We have some people here who haven't tried the skin oh, before. Interesting. Um, so the skin, I think that when people are not a fan of fish skin, a lot of times it's because it's not crispy. And when the skin gets crisped up, it doesn't taste, in my mind, fishy. It kind of, let me just pull off a little piece of skin here and just, um, like, I don't even know, it just tastes delicious. It tastes not like salmon. You know, I guess the best way to put this is when I have experimented with crisping up um, salmon skin before, like off the filet. So that piece that I um, removed the skin from the filet earlier, when I crisped that up, it didn't taste like fish at all. It almost tasted like seaweed, like seaweed snacks. If you've ever had those, like these roasted seaweed pieces of uh, you know paper, basically. It tastes salty. 
and not briny, but just like really caramelized and delicious. So when it gets crispy, it becomes this like really, really amazing texture. But on top of that, a really nice flavor um, that kind of just crowns the, is like the crowning glory of the meal. Um, you know, when the skin it isn't cooked through, it retains like a lot more of those like raw, like more raw flavors, more um, of the sea, if you will. Definitely try it if you, you know, haven't tried uh, crispy fish skin, make it crispy and then eat it. And then you might have your mind changed, but if you still don't like it, all you have to do is pull the skin off the fish. So if you want to cook salmon from frozen, the skin comes off right away after it's done. So, oh yeah, like I said, I'm going to make this look so ugly, but all you have to do is the pull shot. the skin. Yeah, just like that. So I just made the salmon look so unappetizing in my mind. So I'm just going to put its pants back on here. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Definitely leave it on if you can, because it'll help this, the salmon retain moisture as it cooks. Great, and did you leave this the lid on the frying pan while you were cooking because it was frozen? Would you do that if the filet, if you were not cooking from frozen? I did leave it on because I was cooking it from frozen. I don't personally cook it with the lid on um, when it's not cooked from frozen. I know that that is uh, a technique that some people use. Um, it does prevent splattering from happening. Um, but I, I personally don't because it just, everything happens so quickly. I'd rather just keep an eye on the fish without anything in the way. Um, and, you know, it's like a couple minutes aside, especially with wild salmon, it cooks so fast. Um, like the less things in the way, the better, but it's definitely necessary for this technique. Great, thank you. All right. Um, well, if you Wait, have, one, oh, yeah, go one ahead. Question came up. Um, if you're not going to eat the skin, would you place it skin side up in the butter so that you could get a brown on the other side? You know, the thing with salmon is that, especially with wild salmon, you're not going to have as much opportunity to brown, um, especially just like the flesh side of the fish, uh, because first of all, it's super, super lean. So, um, you know, I, it's not really going to become crispy and caramelized. It's going to be cooked, might pick up a little bit of color, um, but because it's so lean, it's basically just going to cook and you're, there's no benefit to doing it one side up or down. So that's honestly your call. I don't think it changes it either way. Um, I, my hunch though, is that it's better to sear it in the butter skin side down because that barrier of fat helps to protect the fish as it cooks. So like I said, it's going to keep the moisture in. It's going to act as a buffer um, between the, the skillet and the fish. Um, it's basically like serving the same purpose as the parchment paper. So I just recommend doing skin side down, but you could try it the other way and see if it, um, you know, does anything special. So hopefully that made sense what I just said. <laughs> All right, one more question. Um, somebody came in a little bit late. How long should the fish cook from frozen and at what temperature? Okay, so total fish cooking from frozen, 15 minutes basically from fridge to pan to plate. Um, so you're going to be cooking it at two different temperatures. You're starting out medium low for five or six minutes just to get that ice glaze melted off and the fish brought to um, like a slightly higher temperature, really gently. And then part two, you're going to add fat to the pan, sear the fish just for a few minutes until it's cooked through. Maybe give it a flip if it needs a couple more minutes than that, but um, that's over medium heat. So usually when you're searing, you want to be doing medium high heat to start and then going down to medium. With this method, you want to start medium low and go to medium. I know that's a lot to follow, but um, but yeah, basically you're starting out gentle, bringing it to a sear in this case, um, but treating it more gently because it's cooking from frozen. Great, thank you. All right. Um, well, thank you all for joining me. Before you go today, um, I do want to remind you that 
are currently offering spot prawns um, as an exclusive member special. We didn't talk about spot prawns today, but um, they're basically some of the best shrimp you'll ever have. Um, we did feature them in the past two live events that um, the recipe team hosted, um, starring me. And um, so you can catch a recording of both of those on our YouTube channel or our Facebook homepage, um, just like you will eventually be able to catch this um, recording if you missed it on the YouTube channel or our Facebook homepage. So um, definitely um, check out one of those videos that we're gonna drop into the chat now. Um, I love spot prawns so much. We just have them for, uh, I think, a couple more days. So don't miss out if you're a shrimp lover. Um, if you're not a member yet, we have a special offer for you. Um, if you become a member today and use the code LIVE25, that's L-I-V-E 25, you'll get $25 off your first box of amazing fish from Wild Alaskan Company, and you'll be able to um, indulge in exclusive member specials like the spot prawns. Um, so um, you can sign up on the Wild Alaskan Company homepage. We'll drop a link in the chat for that. Um, but otherwise, thank you everyone for tuning in today. Uh, we have another event plan planned for next Wednesday. Um, it's a regular event that we run um, where I cover some of the basic building blocks to uh, cooking and enjoying seafood any night of the week. Some of you, some of you may have already come to that, um, but if you're new to cooking wild caught seafood or if you haven't come to that yet, it's a great place to start um, and you get to hang out with me and ask me questions. So uh, thanks so much again for your time and I hope to see you at future events. Live wild. <laughs>